Welcome back everybody. Well, today I'm going to be showing you how to do assignment number 15. This one's a really neat one. Uh, our goal for this assignment is uh, a couple things. Number one, it's to get four lights to turn on one by one, all by spinning a potentiometer. And number two, we're going to take what we know about the if-else statement and we're going to add a little bit to that. We're going to learn about something called else if. Uh, and you'll see what that looks like in a second, but basically instead of allowing us to do one check of things, it's going to allow us to do multiple checks of things. It's a really great programming tool. Well, let's go ahead and get started. So first of all, let's get the circuit going. Like I said, it's going to involve four LEDs and a potentiometer. So I bring my breadboard out and I'll just pull, paste uh, four LEDs on here. And I hope you know the trick by now. You can just click on a component and then do control C to copy it and then control V to paste it somewhere else. So I will paste these four LEDs out here. There's my four LEDs and then I will bring in my potentiometer and I'll just place it so the, the wiper is on row 20. Of course we need our Arduino. And I'll get the usual suspects wired up first. All right. So we've got the five volt wired up first to positive, and then we'll get the negative wired to ground. All right. Now let's go ahead and think about our potentiometer first because this is going to control everything. Just like usual, I want to hook up one terminal of the potentiometer to positive and the other terminal gets hooked up to negative. Oops, don't know what happened there. I'll have to delete that guy. And now my wiper pin, just like in the ones that uh, we just did, uh, I believe that was a uh, assignment like uh, 11. Uh, that wiper pin goes back to any one of these analog pins. We're going to measure how much electricity is coming back uh, from uh, this uh, potentiometer. And since that's a range of things, we need an analog pin to do that. So I'll go ahead and just use A5. It's the closest one, I guess. And each one of these lights is going to be controlled by uh, one of our digital pins here. So I'll go ahead and get some resistors. I'll change that to a 220 ohm resistor. And not kilo ohm, just regular ohm. All right, put that in place. Woo, sorry about that. And control C, control V time. And I am attaching all of these resistors to the cathodes or the short side of the breadboard. And that goes to the negative rail uh, right here on the breadboard. So I need to make sure that my negative rail has an attachment to ground. So there we go, my negative rail now has an attachment to ground on both sides. And uh, as always, I wanna skip using uh, digital pin zero and one. Those are for uh, serial communication. And I'm going to start here and just let uh, pin two control this first LED. And then pin three control the next LED. And I'm changing the colors so quickly because as I'm drawing the wire, if I touch any of the numbers on my keyboard, it will change the color of that wire for me. So here I am, like I just typed in the number six, that gives me that uh, blue color for the wire. And here's the last wire that I need. Make that seven, ah, let's go eight. We'll make it purple. All right, that should be my whole circuit. Now let's go over to my program. All right, I'll switch it from blocks to text. 
I will get rid of the things between the curly brackets. A lot of people in class are deleting these curly br uh, brackets and then replacing them with uh, either parentheses or square brackets. Uh, I hope you remember that these are curly brackets. If you look on your keyboard next to the letter P, that's kind of where your curly brackets uh, begin and end. Anyway, let's go ahead and make some global variables here. Variables that all my functions can use. So the things that I'm um, looking at here, I'm going to need each uh, LED is going to be need to be used in both the setup and the void loop and also my potentiometer. So let's go ahead and name the potentiometer first. So that's INT will make its uh, data uh, integer type data. So whole numbers, that's what integer means. So INT and we'll just call it pot pin like we have been. Uh, and that is A5, all right? Then I'll go INT and then LE, I'll just say uh, lead one pin Okay, that first LED, this guy, is hooked up to pin number two, so I'll just call that two. And then INT LED two pin. And remember, you could choose whatever variables that you want. These are just my variables. Just be consistent about it. So uh, that second pin is number three. And then INT LED three pin. That's the fourth pin over here. And then INT lead uh, four pin, and that's gonna be number five. All right, down here in my setup, well, I need to get all of these LEDs and uh, this potentiometer set up. So I'll start with the potentiometer. Uh, and remember our command to get these pins ready to go to tell them to be inputs or outputs is of course pin mode. Uh, the, cap, the M is capitalized in that one. Then parentheses, which is the number nine and zero, but you have to hold shift to do that. So parentheses, uh, now we've got to give it some arguments. So we're going to start off with the pin that we're addressing, which let's do the uh, potentiometer first. So that's pot pin, that's what we renamed it. And that is an input pin because it is getting electricity in. And then all these LEDs, those pins are going to send electricity or current out to the LEDs. So the, all of those are output pins. So I'll just go pin mode and then I'll go lead one pin and that's an output. And because I like being efficient, some people would call it lazy. I just take that line. I copied it with control C. I'll use control V to paste it and change the number one to number two, and then I'll paste it again with control V from two to three, and one last time, and I have all of my pins set up. And just because I'm always a creature of habit, I always like to start the serial service. Serial begin 9600, and that's just in case we need to send information to a computer. I think it might actually be pretty helpful for this one. I'm gonna start out by uh, measuring how much uh, voltage is coming back on that A5 pin. Remember, if you look down here, our potentiometer is grabbing five volts of current uh, through that red wire, and it's passing current back to A5. So this orange wire will have a changing voltage on it as I spin my knob, so it'll be either from zero volts to five volts. But remember, our potentiometer, our A5 pin there, doesn't read one, two, three, four, or five volts. It reads a number from zero to 1,023. So let's just kind of see what, where those numbers are. So uh, I'm going to uh, take and I'll go, uh, well, let's make a, a variable for remembering the, that measurement. So I'll go int and we'll call it pot measure like we've done before that variable will remember how much uh, voltage is coming back on A5. So we have to read that voltage. So that's an analog, because this is an analog pin. This is an analog read. And what pin are we analog reading? That's A5. So again, it, this is a super important line. I've basically taken a measurement of A5. That's what the analog read is. And I'm storing it in a new variable called pot measure. 
So let's just kind of see uh, how much that is. I'll just serial print that. Serial.println. And what do I want to print? I want to print the variable that's remembering the measurement. So that's pot measure. Let's just kind of test our code out so far. I started it up. Okay, no errors. I'll go into my serial monitor. And you can see right now, no voltage is coming back to A5. All right. So let's hope that when I spin this, that I get some voltage. There we go. So you can see about halfway, I'm at 511. At all the way, I'm at 1023. 1023 means all five volts are coming back to the A5 pin. 1023 is the same as five volts. They're the same thing. I'll stop that. All right. What I'm going to do now is think, well, I have four lights here. I want each one of those lights to turn on at a different level, I guess, of my potentiometer. So as I spin my potentiometer from zero all the way to 1023, I want those lights to turn on. So basically, I have to think about that range that goes all the way up to 1023. And I want to split that up into four parts. So if you open up a calculator and go 1023, divided by four, it comes out to about 256. So let's remember that number 256. That's going to be very important for us. Because we're going to use some if statements to make things happen based on multiples of 256. So let's start off with the first thing. This should look pretty familiar to us. We'll go if and then parentheses because we have to give it a check. I want to check a variable to see if it's a certain amount or under a certain amount. So the variable I'm going to check is the variable that remembers the range of electricity. I hope you remember that's the pot measure one. So I'll go pot measure. All right. This time I'm going to say as long as pot measure is below or less than. So I typed in the less than, which is next to the letter M on your keyboard, 256. We're going to call that the low end of our range or the first thing, right? So there's four things that are going to happen here. Either one light's going to turn on, two lights, three lights, four lights. So we're going to look at the low end of our readings from the potentiometer. And the low end of our readings uh, would mean that uh, we're at 256 or below. So I need to start my if function or my if statement with a curly bracket. And I'm just going to go ahead and give it myself a couple spaces and type the closed curly bracket because all of the commands I want to do, if this check is true, so if pot measure is lower than 256, I'm going to put all of those commands between these two curly brackets. So right now, I want that first light to be on and all the other lights to be off. So to turn a light on and off, do you remember that? I hope you remember that it's digital right. So I'm going to digital right and then let's just say lead one pin. That should be high because that's our first light. And then all the others should be low. So I'm just going to copy that and I'll paste it a few times. One, two, three, and then I'll change the numbers and their values. So what should lead two pin be right now? Well, since this is the first uh, first set of things that happens, it should be low, all right? And the next one should also be low, and the last one should also be low, all right? I'm going to go now, instead of using else this time, I'm gonna teach you a new trick, because else, if and else only allows me to do one thing or the other. So there's only two possibilities. Well, if we look at our circuit here, instead of two possibilities, we have four possibilities. So we still need to keep checking that variable pot measure to see if something else is true. So instead of just saying else, I'm going to say else if, and that's going to let me make another check of pot measure. So What's the other thing I need to check here? So I'm going to go else if pot measure. And if I go 256 plus 256, that's 
512. I hope my math is right. So now I'm going to say, else if pot measure is lower than 512. So if pot measure is lower than 256, it will turn on one light. If pot measure is lower than 512, well, what do we want to have happen? We want two lights to turn on. So I'll start off with my curly brackets. And I'm just going to go up here and I'm going to, since I've already written all this stuff to keep one light on and the other three off, I'm going to grab this, copy it. I'm going to paste it. Now here, what do I want to have happen? I want lead pin one and lead pin two to be on now. So I'm going to change lead two pin to high. And the other two should be low. And again, because I love efficiency, what some would call laziness, I'm just going to go and this whole else if. I'm going to copy that because I am not done making a check. I've only made two checks, but there's four things that need to happen. So let's do my third check. I'm just going to paste what I copied here to do my third check. So now I'm not going to check to see if it's lower than 512 because we've already done that. Instead, I'm just going to add 512 to 256 uh, to see what my next check should be. And that's going to be 768. So now, if pot measure is below 768, what do I want it to do? I want the first light to be on, the second light to be on, and now the third light to be on. Okay. And you know, I already have this stuff copied. So I'm going to go and I'm gonna to going to paste again one last time. And what number do I need to change it to now? Well, what's the maximum that pot value or pot measure can be? Yeah, the maximum that it can be is 1023. So I'll just set it to its maximum, 1023. So this is basically saying, if the measurement is below the, ma actually I'll go one, because it can get up to 1,023. I almost made a mistake there, folks, right? It can get to 1,023. So if I would turn this dial all the way to its maximum, weird stuff would happen. So let's say 1,024 so that uh, this number at max can get to 1,023, which is always going to be lower than 1,024. So if my uh, value or if my measurement of the potentiometer pin is lower than 1024, I basically want all of these to turn on. So our Arduino is gonna read it like this. It's gonna start and it, just like humans do, it's going to read in order. It's gonna see if this thing is true first. So if the pot pin is lower than 256, it will do this. Well, if the pot pin is higher than 256, it's gonna go in and check to see if this is true. All right, so if that pot pin is lower than 512, it's going to do all of these things. Well, if it's not lower than 512, it's, if it's greater than 512, uh, sorry, 512, it's going to go here and check to see if this next thing is true. It's going to check to see if the pot measure is lower than 768. And if that's true, it'll do these things. However, if this is not true, if the pot measure is greater than 768, it's going to go right down here and check to see if this is true. And this is our last case that would turn all the lights on. So let's see if we've got any code problems or let's hope the gremlins aren't going to attack us. I'll start simulation. Fingers crossed. Hey, no problems here. Uh, except it looks like I have a little problem with my wiring. Maybe. Okay, so here I am. I'm at 164 and I only have one light that's kind of on. Let's see if I can find where my gremlin is. Folks, I have found my gremlins. I hope you remember when I was copying and pasting uh, in order to be efficient I needed to change some things. I didn't change all the time. So you could see I started here in my very first thing, lead pin, lead one pin, lead two pin. But right here, that shouldn't be lead one pin. This should be lead three pin. This should be lead four pin. So I need to go through my entire program and change those correctly. 
I found my gremlins. Thanks for bearing with me, folks. I hope that's a lesson everyone learns up from that. If you do copy and paste like that, make sure that you change things appropriately. Now let's see if this works. Ah, yeah, there we go. So you can see that these lights are gonna turn on one by one based on the value that this A5 pin is getting. Well, uh, this is a fun one to build. It's uh, especially in real life. I hope you enjoy the uh, doing it and I hope you have a great rest of your day. Thanks for watching.